Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to Liberty Baptist Church this morning. Take uh, our Baptist hymn. We'll turn to page 203. Let's stand and sing. His name is wonderful. 203. Standing as we sing. Let's greet one another this morning. This is normally the time we have uh, announcements. I don't know of any announcements. Nobody told me about it. Does anybody have any? Anybody want to announce anything? I don't have any announcements. <laughs> we have a, a baby shower Saturday at 10 o'clock. Saturday? It's coming Saturday at 10 o'clock? Okay. 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 All right. We certainly will. Well, let's, uh, anybody else this morning before we continue on? I see any other hands. All right. Let's take our uh, Baptist handle. Turn to page 189. All three verses of the Lily of the Valley. 189. <laughs> I have found a friend in Jesus who's everything to me. 
He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart and now he keeps me by his fire. Lo, all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore. Through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith into his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. This will be an offertory hymn, but I wonder how many people, when we sing this song, we sing it a lot. Well, I say a lot. We sing it often. But I wonder how many people actually believe what this song says. Let's turn to page 550. This will be an offertory hymn. Let's stand and sing all three verses of I'd Rather Have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus.
thankful for the many blessings of life you bestowed upon us, Lord. And I just pray that that be everyone's heart today, Lord, that we would rather have you than everything, Lord, or anything that this world affords to give, Father. As we know that you are eternal, Lord, all the things of this world will pass away, but not you, Lord. You're here Amen. forever. I just ask, Lord, as we give back just a small piece of what you blessed us with, Lord, that you use it in the ongoing of your kingdom. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to page 571. This will be our last congregation song. I have a guest this morning, so we will get her up here in just a few moments. <laughs> 571. Uh, let others see Jesus in you. Let's sing all four verses. 571. <laughs> Jesus in you. 
She is our co-commander for one of this year. And she uh, has someone to introduce to you. So come on, Sarah. Can I do what? I'm fixing to, because I'm about to melt. Okay, good. Okay, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I am here as the co-commander for Awana. Um, we love our Awana program. We love our Awana kids. We love our Awana leaders. Um, and we could not have done all of that without lots of other people. And this morning we have Sa Miss Sandy, if you want to start making your way up, um, I'll just say a few words. Miss Sandy is our Awana missionary for our area. And anytime we have a question, she is, um, obliging to us. Um, anytime we have a, uh, hiccup in our program and we want to, some advice. She is more than willing to help us. Um, she prays for us. She encourages us with emails and, and different things, and we just really appreciate all that she does. And she's here visiting with us today, and she just had a few things that she wanted to say. So we're going to um, ask Miss Sandy to come up and take it from there. <laughs> just let me know. I have any idea. Um, well, I guess I should. This is the live mic. This so is the live mic. If you don't want to, and this is on it. Facebook and all that kind of good stuff. So don't, don't think about that. It's okay. Goodness gracious! <laughs> How are y'all doing this morning? Good. Doing good. Yay! I'm so glad you're here. Yes, I am the Awana missionary. So I have the privilege. Uh, oh, look at there! I want y'all to have a visual, okay? So I have the privilege of going to these counties. These are the counties God gave me. Okay, so they're mine. Everybody says, oh, you don't act like that. Well, they're mine because God gave them to me, okay? <laughs> so so this is where I get to go and visit Awana Clubs, start Awana Clubs, and, yes, encourage. Because since COVID, you see that where it says over 100 clubs? I actually had 42 to register this year, okay? Now, y'all are blessed because I hear that y'all never really stopped having church. You just moved it outdoors. Okay? A lot of churches, a lot of churches didn't start back till way later than that. A lot of churches are really, really struggling because of that. Uh, out of those um, that didn't start back up, maybe half started another children's ministry, which, yay, I'm still glad that you're ministering to the children, but it's nothing like Awana. Okay? And those of y'all who are in Awana, know how special and how God has used Awana, okay? But I want everybody to know what Awana is all about. And I know I keep leaving this mic, but i got to be over here so y'all can see my hands, all right? <laughs> because we're going to stand up and do the Awana prayer. If y'all want to know what Awana is all about, this is it. This is it, okay? So if everyone would stand, okay? And this is the Awana prayer, okay? That all children and you throughout the world will come to know love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ y'all think y'all got it let's do it really loud and proud now okay ready all right here we go yeah yeah all right that all children and you throughout the world will come to know, love, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. So if anybody ever asks you, what, what, what's a want about? What are you doing at your church? That's what you're doing, okay? We've got to get these children to love the Lord because, you know, when you love him, then you get to know him. You get to know him. You want to serve him. And when you serve him, You'll love them even more, okay? Yes. 
and it just keeps going and it keeps growing and that's what it's all about knowing loving serving the Lord Jesus Christ so thank y'all for letting me come this morning I love being with y'all I love being with a church that has a passion for their children okay yes thank you I love the hand gestures. My wife once told me if I was handcuffed with my hands behind my back, I couldn't preach. So, I'm sorry. This is your pastor's fault. I was at the house minding my own business in my recliner, and he called. You people love your pastor. He, you gave him a great offering with Pastor's Appreciation Month, and now he's off enjoying it <laughs> with his kids. Bless your heart. But as long as he calls me, I'm going to try to come. So thank you for this opportunity. If you've got your Bibles this morning, turn with us to Psalm 122. Psalm 122. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this dear lady with the one and Lord, what a great organization. Father, thank you for this church and for what she stands. Thank you for the pastor here, Lord, and blessing his little time off. Give him a good time, bring him safely home, we pray. Father, we pray the Holy Spirit will have absolute, complete control over this service. May he so move in our hearts that each one of us will be touched and affected. And Lord, it just might be that he would lead us to an altar for various reasons. But dear God, that we might leave this building today changed, enlightened, uplifted. We give you praise. Bless this church. Father, bless our church there at Oak Grove that you would be with them. Lord, we love you. We offer this in Jesus' name. And for his sake, we pray. Your son, our Savior. Amen. If you will, please stand with us as we read Psalm 122. I've already tore up something. I don't know what that is. Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee, Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy gates, for my brethren and companions' sake. I will now say, Peace be with thee, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Thank you, and please be seated.
I was glad. Glad. In Hebrew, that shall make a. It means to be gleeful, joyful, to be merry, to rejoice. This morning when we woke up, my heart's prayer is that we were glad. Going to the house of God. Why do we come to church? What is the basic reason? Why are we here? Anyone, anyone who wishes to serve God must learn to worship Him. Not programs, not churches. Worship God. Under that, all these other good things come into being. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, What greater calamity can fall upon a nation than the loss of worship? <coughs> now, to worship God for what He's done for us, He's good. God has blessed me. Folks, God has scattered me through seven towns and six churches. God watered us, <coughs> fed us, housed us, protected us. God has blessed this man. And I want to come. And to worship him for his goodness. But the problem with that is if we begin to feel like he's not doing enough for us, we might quit our worship. We might worship less. Beloved, the greatest motive for worshiping God is to worship Him for Himself. He'll not share His glory with another. So a lot of good reasons can come from coming to worship. But may the seal of our heart be that we come to worship Him just for who he is. Amen. He is our Lord and our Savior, our sustainer, our keeper, and soon coming King. Amen. And we need just to come, worship Him for Himself. When we do this, all these other motives will fall into place. Now this psalm is about worship. Written by a man who apparently had been to God's house. Been there many times. But returning home he had many memories of the occasion. So this verse is sort of like, like a flashback. The author saw himself as a person. Maybe this is a rural setting. He's standing there alongside the road. And some pilgrims pass by. And they're on their way to Jerusalem to worship God. This was one of their annual festivals. And apparently they called out for him, Come on, 
accompany, accompany us. And though he may not have intended to go to that feast at that time, their invitation it moved him to join him. Come on, go with us. And then looking back after the event, he was so happy that he made the decision to go with them to God's house. Every time is different. It's not monotony. It never grows old. It's always new. When God's people gather together and God is in control and the Holy Spirit has perfect freedom, who knows what might happen have we ever had this experience? We were not sure if we just wanted to go to church and worship the Lord on His day. Have we ever got up and just pondered whether to go or not? There are reasons for going. There are reasons for not going. Should I go to church today? Maybe you're pondering that and perhaps maybe even at the last minute somebody came by and said, go to church with us today. Somebody might call Say, hey, see you at church. Come on and worship with us. And you just decided to go. And afterwards, you are mighty glad that you did. It's always a good experience. And I don't want to get into tonight's sermon, but I'm going to go ahead and say this. Somebody is in this church today because of you. Somebody, I'm sure today in this church right now was saved because of they watched you. They heard you. They listened to you. They watched your lifestyle. Maybe a child, grandchild, brother, sister, man, wife, friend, neighbor, co-worker. You've touched somebody's life because today you came to church. So, verse 2 reads, Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And the poet was impressed anew at the city. He'd been there before. Each time was a fresh and exhilarating experience. What happens when we put God back on the throne? Beloved people can read us. It's hard to fool some people. They can read right through what you say and what you do. And I believe, beloved, when we're real, people know it. I know that there have been many wonderful experiences right here in this church. This church apparently started out with a vision. I've studied and probably forgotten it, but somebody had a vision. 
Where there is no vision, the people perish. Somebody had a vision for this church. Somehow, under God, land was bought. Land was given. Land was swapped. You got the land. A tent went up. And then the first building. And then this building. And I promise you this building looks different now than it did in 1982. Thank you. And each time we come, there is a new experience. This group stood spellbound by the city's magnificence. By the memories of its ancient stories, how did we get to where we are today? By an act and grace of Almighty God, because people wanted to go and said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So the tense of go in verse 4 means something that the people had done, were doing, and continuing to do so. And the psalmist actually called this practice of the people a testimony. What is our testimony about church? Are we there? Are we glad? Can we not wait to get there? When's the next service? I want to go. I read recently where most kids that don't go to church, their parents didn't go. Trained them well. How true of worship is our testimony. When we go to God's house regularly, we're giving a silent witness to the world that we love God. That we worship God. And we want to be recognized as being on his side. In issues that confront the world. And then the author's recollection of that joyful worship. Just caused him to bid others to come. I want to share this with you. I want you to have that same happy experience that I've had. Now, we know that the city of Jerusalem was dear to every Jew. It symbolized the place where God was present in a unique way. You remember God's presence in the tabernacle, in the temple, fire, fire by night and a cloud by day leading the children to that place. The Ark of the Covenant had been placed there and the temple was later built on that same spot. And the glory of the Lord was in the Holy of Holies. No more sacred spot could be found in all the earth. No place like Jerusalem. And dear God, thank you that one day Jerusalem will be the capital of the new earth. Beloved, where is your most sacred spot at? Could it be right here? Right here. The most sacred, holy spot on God's earth. Now I know Christians don't worship exclusively in one spot. Jesus revealed to his followers that God is everywhere. And he is to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And we can worship God anywhere and do. But the local church is the place where Christians go to experience God's presence in a unique 
way. Beloved, how we grow, how we feel, how we pull on one another in our relationship with Jesus. I go through things, and I know you go through things, and when we get together and we share, we know God is at work in all of our lives. God is going to watch over us and get us through. So assembling together with other Christians regularly is necessary for that highest form of corporate joy and the most effective service. Private worship, quiet meditation, that's good. And it's necessary. I have to do that. I live alone. But I'll tell you what, I've had some God visits in that little house. God is still amazing. We need the strength that comes from corporate worship. The more people worship, the more they realize the value. And it begins to encourage others to join this wholesome and profitable activity. Who knows what goes on in that church? Boy, I hear some great things. I've got to go and find out. And I went. And I was glad. It made me gleeful. It made me rejoice to know God is still active. God is still alive in his church. God is still at work. So across the country and the world, how many are in church today because they were invited? They were invited. Have we even dared to ask somebody to come and worship with us and then take them to lunch? Now, if that ancient Jew found joy in worshiping the God he knew, then how much more should we who have a much higher revelation of him, just find ecstasy and great delight in the fervent worship of this God who has, in Jesus, redeemed the world from sin. How much more of Jesus we know. That poor Old Testament, they had Leviticus, You know, a bunch of thou shalt nots. <laughs> Look at what we got. We've got revelation. Jesus is coming. Jesus came. Jesus lived. Jesus died. Jesus rose. And he's coming back and built his church. Amen. The Old Testament Jews... They didn't know about the rapture. They believed that Jesus was coming back, and that was pretty much it. But there's going to be a little place between now and Jesus coming back. It's called the rapture. He's not going to come down to the earth, but he's going to be seen. And we're going to be raptured up, and the dead are going to be raised, and then we're going to be changed, and we'll all be alike again, and then we'll go up together to meet the Lord in the air. We know these things. And it could happen before I get through. Anytime. We've got so much more to be grateful and thankful and to be glad for than they did. And yet, they said, it was good. I was glad when they said unto me, One glorious day. I want to get into a little bit of prophecy here. Public worship. 
makes religion practical, and it prevents our devotional lives from becoming isolated. I love reading my Bible and studying and learning, but when you're in a house by yourself and you can't share it, and it's just not the same when we can come to a good Bible study and learn from each other and grow with each other. And if we're not careful and we don't come to church regularly, we'll become isolated and our personalities will just become introverted and making our witness virtually worthless. So come, let us go with others to worship God just for who he is. He is Listen, we don't shock God. We've never caught God off guard. God's never been jolted or surprised. He knows us. In whatever we face, he's already been there. He's got it under control. Now, one glorious day, those weary pilgrims, after their long journey, will stand at last in the gates of their beloved Jerusalem. 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 They lift their eyes to the temple. There it stands with its shining gold glittering in that bright sunlight. A glad cry passes from lip to lip. Let us go. Let us go into the house of the Lord. This is a millennial song. Looking forward to that time when all the tribes will go up to Jerusalem and assemble themselves for worship. What a day that will be. They've been out of their city now for a long time. They actually do not have full possession of the city today. They cannot build their temple on the temple site because the mosque of Omar is there briefly. And all of the sacred places are pretty well covered by Gentiles. But beloved Hosea, old Hosea, that little teeny prophet back in the Old Testament, chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, says, we read these words, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image, without an ephod, and without the teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord in his goodness in the latter days. Folks, it's coming. I know this is quicker than it's ever, sooner than it's ever been. Getting close. God is lining everything up. Oh, Russia thinks they can take Israel. They think if they gather all these old nations together that hate Israel, they can wipe her out. But you see, in the Bible, there's in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And they're going to come. And nobody, nobody can stop this force of all these nations, Gog and Magog, and gather together 
to come against one little tiny Israel. Nobody can stop it but God. God. Almighty Jehovah God. Earthquakes. Volcanoes. Maters coming from the sky, big as Volkswagens. Pounding, pounding, pounding. So much smoke the sun can't shine. It gets dark. In fear, the soldiers begin shooting themselves. Israel will survive. going to be such a plague it's going to take seven years to bury the dead we got to do something with all these bodies with blood horses bridled deep something's got to happen and God is on the scene beloved one day Israel will have her land and nations from all over the world are going to seek. They're going to want to go to Jerusalem. Dr. Gablin says a magnificent city compacted together, not only architecturally, a vast, a great, and beautiful city, but compacted together spiritually. There's going to be a day when her warfare is over, over, no more war, no more pain. She's no longer in strife. She's no longer in danger of attack. No longer can she look north, east, west, south, and all those people want her destruction. But now all the countries in the world are going to want to come to Jerusalem to worship because now they've seen what Almighty God can do. Send your tanks and your weapons and your planes. God's got an army ready to destroy it all. And he can do it without firing a shot because he's God. So come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Worship God. He is going to do and has done amazing things. And I think we should worship him just for who? He is. Let's pray. Father, I love you. We love you. Lord, I know liberty loves you. Father, I've been here. I know these people. We come together corporately to worship you. To seek your face. Father, how many times have we thought our ministry is done, our life is over, you're just going to call us home. And then, dear God, you open up another plan. And here we are. God, you're awesome. You are amazing. You are indeed God. And dear Father in heaven, may we come today and may we continue to come. And dear Father, to worship you just for who you are. Lord, truly, you are our everything. And Father, today we come and we say thank you. May you be worshipped in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen.
Future deacon right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. Anybody else this morning? Brother Ricky Fletcher, would you mind dismissing this, please? Hey, Amen.